Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about GINA guidelines 2023. So since it is a vast topic, I have divided into five main topics here. So we will discuss this one first and we will discuss the remaining topic in the next video. So we will see here the definition and diagnosis of asthma, treatment of asthma in children between 6 to 11 years of age and differential diagnosis for asthma and how are you going to assess the uh, patient whom you are going to treat them, diagnosis and treatment of asthma in children less than 5 years of age. First we will go on with definition. So asthma it is a heterogeneous disease that is characterized by chronic airway inflammation. So asthma is a heterogeneous disease that is characterized by chronic airway inflammation. It is defined by its history of symptoms. It is defined by its history of symptoms such as that is four main symptoms such as wheeze, shortness of breath. chest tightness and cough these symptoms along with this these symptoms if they vary should vary with time in intensity and together they should have a documented variable expiratory airflow limitation so they should have a variable expiratory airflow limitation so this is the definition of asthma so asthma coming on back asthma is a heterogeneous disease that is characterized by chronic airway inflammation so it is defined mainly by the symptoms such as wheeze shortness of breath chest tightness and cough that vary with time intensity and they will also have a documented expiratory airflow limitation okay we will go into the detail of this definition that is we will talk about the patterns of respiratory symptoms that are characteristic of asthma pattern of respiratory symptom sorry that are characteristic of asthma so the respiratory symptoms as told earlier these are wheeze second is shortness of breath third is cough and fourth is chest tightness so these symptoms these symptoms four these are worse at night so these symptoms are worse at night and in the early morning these symptoms vary with time and in intensity these symptoms are triggered by viral infections exercise that is like running and everything allergen exposure changes in the weather emotions like laughter crying 
and irritants such as car exhaust fumes and smoke these are the triggering factors okay that is viral infections exercise allergen exposure changes in weather emotions and the irritants so along with these they should have a documented excessive variability in the lung function so we will see the documented excessive variability in the lung function so what are the documented excessive variability in the lung functions these are first one this is positive bronchodilator responsiveness test it is positive bronchodilator response responsiveness test in this there will be an increase in the fev1 so there will be a increase in fev1 from the baseline of around 12 percentage of the predicted value okay so there will be an increase in the fev1 from the baseline of around 12 percentage this is measured after like 10 to 15 minutes of giving 200 to 400 micrograms of salbutamol so this is measured 10 to 15 minutes after 200 to 400 micrograms of giving salbutamol or its equivalent okay this is positive bronchodilator responsiveness test next is second excessive variability in twice daily pef over two weeks so there will be a excessive variability in twice daily p of that is peak expiratory flow rate over 2 weeks here there will be an average diurnal variability of around more than 13 percentage so there should be a average diurnal force i mean peak expiratory flow variability should be more than 13 percentage okay this is second evidence third one is positive exercise challenge test in positive exercise challenge test there will be a fall in the fev1 by 12 percentage like more than 12 percentage from predicted so there will be a fall in fev1 of more than 12 percentage predicted how in a positive bronchodilator responsive test there will be a increase in fev1 of more than 12 percentage here there will be a fall in fev1 of 12 percentage that is predicted okay so this is about the documented excessive variability in lung function along with this there should be a documented expiratory air flow limitation also so along with this along with this there will be a documented expiratory air flow limitation so how we are going to document this at the time when fev1 is reduced we should confirm that fev1 by fvc is also reduced so at a time when fev1 is reduced so you should confirm that 
F E V one divided by F V C. This is should also be reduced. To tell that there will be a uh, expiratory flow air flow limitation. Okay, so F V V one divided by F V C should also be reduced, and F V V one should also be reduced. Okay, this is about the uh, definition and how we are going to diagnose. asthma in a patient okay next we will see about the treatment of asthma if you have diagnosed the patient who are having asthma next we will see how we are going to treat the patient with asthma so treatment of asthma in children between 6 to 11 years of age here so here i have shown the chart here So, if the child has a symptom of symptoms, it is wheeze, shortness of breath, or chest tightness, or with cough, less than twice a month, along with this documented evidence. So, here we have uh, before talking going to the treatment, I will tell you the what are the terminologies used in the asthma for the treatment. Okay, so catech that is being a new thing in uh, this Gina twenty twenty three. So, categories of asthma medications first is maintenance treatment so treatment that is prescribed for the use every day so the treatment that is prescribed for use every day even when the person does not have the asthma symptoms okay for example uh, when we are when will we suggest this uh, inhaled corticosteroids Uh, as well as this uh, leukotriene receptor agonist i mean antagonist and biological therapies so example treatment containing uh, this inhaled corticosteroids containing medications okay so maintenance therapy is the patient is using the treatment every day even when the symptoms are not being present this is maintenance therapy second is reliever so second is reliever medications these are being provided to all the patients as needed relief of breakthrough symptoms so these they are used only when there is an exacerbation of the symptoms but they but these are pres uh, prescribed to all the patients they'll be having with them they'll be using it only in the emergency cases to all the patients as needed relief of breakthrough symptoms so these are being used as a knee as needed relief of their breakthrough symptoms including any uh, including during the worsening asthma or during exacerbations like examples ics with saba or saba alone okay next is third one controller medications these controller medications uh, targeting both the domains of asthma treatment that is uh, what are the two domains of asthma treatment is one is symptom control another one is future risk symptom control is they, they should be controlled by this wheeze shortness of breath chest tightness and cough so they are controlling these symptoms future risk is 
that is the decrease in the lung function if they have a decreased lung function they will be having a future exacerbation so they, they uh, when the controller medication the medic targets both these that is both symptom control and uh, reduces the future risk it is called as control medication so the medications the target both the domains of asthma that is symptom control and future risk okay so this is mostly referred to the medication that is containing Inhale, inhaled corticosteroids that were used to reduce the airway inflammations so mostly referred to medications containing inhaled corticosteroids okay fourth one is mart that is maintenance and reliever therapy So in maintenance and reliever therapy, so treatment regimen in which the patient uses this ICS formatrol every day as a maintenance and also uses the same medication as reliever for the asthma symptom is called as maintenance and reliever therapy. So treatment regimen in which the patient uses ICS with formatrol as maintenance that is every day and the same being used as reliever therapy is called maintenance and reliever therapy that is smart okay these are the categories of asthma medications okay so now we will come into the treatment of the asthma children with the age of 6 to 11 years of age so first if the child has a symptom that is less than twice a month so preferred controller here is you use low dose ICS taken whenever this SABA is taken that is reliever therapy here is as needed SABA for this step 1 when the child has a symptom less than twice a month ok less than twice per month or you can consider this is other controller options or you can consider daily low dose ICS can also be used ok next is step 2 when the symptoms are twice a month or more but less than daily when it is more than twice per month or less than but less than a day so here you have to use preferred controller treatment option here is daily low dose inhaled corticosteroids a reliever here for this is as needed saba next we'll go into the step 3 that is the child is having symptoms for most of the days or waking with the asthma symptoms once a week or more so more than or equal to one time per week so then you go for the step 3 treatment that is here you combine with LABA that is low dose ICS with LABA or medium dose ICS or very low dose ICS for metrol that is I have told you know this maintenance and reliever therapy that uh, this ICS for metrol can be used both as maintenance and reliever therapy so you can use whether low dose ICS with LABA or medium dose ICS or very low dose ICS with for metrol this is for step 3 next step 4 this the child when she have or when she or he have symptoms most days or waking with asthma once a week or more along with that the child should have a low lung function so more than or equal to one week one uh, one time per week along with this the child is having low lung function then you can give 
medium dose here it is low dose ICS with LABA here it is medium dose ICS with LABA here are low dose ICS with formetrol as both maintenance and a reliever therapy this is for step 4 next is step 5 that is here if the symptom is not being controlled in step 4 then you have to refer for phenotypic assessment plus higher dose of ICS with LABA or into an add-on therapy of anti IgE or anti ILR IL4R okay that is new GINA guidelines 2023 they have given uh, they have given an add-on of mepolizumab that is an anti IL5 antibody this one anti IL5 antibody by subcutaneous uh, injection can be used in child having a, a uh, the stage of step 5 with severe eosinophilic asthma i'll write it here update so add mepolizumab so you can should add mepolizumab which is an anti IL-5 antibody it is given as subcutaneous injection it is preferred maintenance treatment option for children with so this is a preferred maintenance option for children with or child with step 5 along with severe eosinophilic asthma ok this is an update in 2023 GINA guidelines so this is about the treatment for children uh, with uh, uh, asthma between 6 to 11 years of age Next, we will see about the assess how we are going to assessment assess the asthma control after starting the therapy. Next is assessment. So, asthma control. So, what is meant by asthma control? So, the level of asthma control is the extent to which the manifestation of asthma have been removed or being reduced by the treatment. So. The extent to which the manifestations of asthma have been reduced or removed by treatment. Okay, so this asthma control has two domains. One is symptom control, another one is future risk. Okay, so future risk of this adverse outcome is lung function is an important part of assessment of the future risk. okay so it should be measured at the start of the treatment and three to six minutes after the treatment also so this lung function should be measured at the start of the treatment and after three to six months of the treatment okay so this is about the asthma control next we'll see the assessment of this asthma medication i mean after giving the asthma medications assessment in this assessment it is being done in three categories 
वन इज यू हेव टू असिस द आस्तमा कंट्रोल एज टोल्ड अर्लियर सो आस्तमा कंट्रोल असिस्सिंग द आस्तमा कंट्रोल वन इज यू हेव टू लुक फॉर द सिम्टम कंट्रोल एंड अदर वन इज बै यू ड्यूइंग द लंग फंक्शन टेस्ट सो इन दिस सिम्टम कंट्रोल यू हेव टू आस्क द पेशेंट आफ्टर स्टार्टिंग द ट्रीटमेंट इन द पास्ट फोर वीक्स आफ्टर स्टार्टिंग द ट्रीटमेंट वेदर द चाइल्ड हेड एनी डे टाइम आस्तमा सिम्टम्स सो वेन द चाइल्ड हेज एनी डे टाइम आस्तमा सिम्टम्स फॉर मोर दैन टाइस पर् वीक और एनी नाइट वेकिंग ड्यू टू आस्तमा at least once per week second whether they have used saba reliever therapy for the symptoms for more than twice per week or when the child whether the child had any activity limitation due to asthma okay so you have to ask these four questions uh, uh, after one month of starting the treatment so when the child does not have any of these symptoms when it is none of the above or none of these it means the child is being well controlled with the, with her or her medication when the child has one to two of these symptoms it means child is being partly controlled so this means child is being partly controlled or when the child has 3 to 4 of these symptoms it means child is being poorly controlled or uncontrolled this is how we are going to assess the symptom control uh, after starting your treatment okay next assessment is assess the treatment issues second is you have to assess the treatment issues so in treatment issues watch the inhaler technique how they are using the technique inhaler technique one next you have to assess the adherence to the treatment and their side effects so you have to watch the inhaler technique second whether they are using it regularly that is whether they have adherence to the treatment and their side effects if any okay and check if they have any uh, written asthma action plan in their notebook third is you have to assess the any morbidity multi morbidity so morbidity here you have to know whether the child has any rhinitis or rhino sinusitis third whether she or she have grd or obesity or obstructive sleep apnea syndrome okay so you have to assess the other morbidities so this is the assessment how you going to assess the child who have been diagnosed with the asthma okay next we'll see the differential diagnosis so the differential diagnosis for asthma in children between 6 to 11 years of age first one it can be a chronic upper airway syndrome second inhaled foreign body third bronchitis fourth any primary ciliary dyskinesia or it can be congenital heart disease next i'll tell a little point about the doses of